Hello, hello, and welcome to DS Tech Media. I am Jay, and I do videos about everything tech, but I try to focus on Linux and open source software. And today we're going to be looking at Markdown and a comparison of some Markdown editors specifically for Linux. So uh, what is Markdown? Markdown is a lightweight markup language with plain text formatting syntax. Uh, its design allows it to be converted to many output formats, but the original tool by the same name only supports HTML. Markdown is often used to format readme files for writing messages in online discussion forums and to create rich text using a plain text editor. Since the initial description of Markdown contained ambiguities and unanswered questions, the implementations that appeared over the years have subtle differences and many come with syntax extensions. John Gruber created the Markdown language in 2004 in collaboration with Aaron Schwartz on the syntax and Aaron Schwartz was an American computer programmer, entrepreneur, writer, political organizer, and internet activist. He was involved in the development of the web feed format RSS, Markdown Publishing Format. He was part of the organization of the Creative Commons and he was also the co-founder of the social news site Reddit. So what is Markdown for? Well, Markdown can be used to stylize text that you're writing on your computer in a portable way to be exported as a PDF. Some allow exporting to Word and you can also quickly create HTML. And this can be useful for blogging sites. Uh, I use it for uh, steamit.com, for Medium. Uh, you can also use it for your WordPress sites or even your ghost sites. So we're going to be looking at these five uh, Markdown editors and readers, uh, starting with Quilter, which was the uh, first Markdown editor that I really used, Marktext, Typora, Ghostwriter, and if you're on Android or iOS, there is the IA writer. So I started using Quilter because I am an elementary OS user on the laptop. And Quilter is specifically created for the elementary OS app store, but can also be installed on other distributions as well. If you are on elementary OS, you can install Quilter directly from the elementary OS App Center. It is also pre-built for Arch Linux and also for Fedora. Uh, if you're on Ubuntu like I am, you will have to build it yourself by cloning the uh, GitHub repository. Quilter is uh, very simple and straightforward. It lets you switch between three different fonts. It has the edit mode and the preview mode. It allows you to export to you both PDF or HTML and uses elementary's custom toolkit. As you can see, you can switch between the four pre-configured elementary OS themes and it has a focus mode. There is a markdown cheat sheet and it can track lines, words, and characters and it gives you a estimated reading time. 
You can also search the document, replace and replace all. And it comes with a fairly simple preferences dialog. It also supports spell checking and saving files as they're changed. You can change your uh, spacing of text, you can change your margins, you can change your uh, font size. You can have it focus on paragraphs or sentences. It has a typewriter scrolling mode and you can show or hide status and search bars. Pretty straightforward. So the reason that I moved away from Quilter is for whatever reason on Ubuntu there is a serious uh, render or input lag. I don't even really know how to describe it. But it works flawlessly on elementary OS and it, it I haven't uh, recompiled it from source for a while. So that could be why. So they may have uh, fixed it. I honestly don't really know. But it is a great editor and it is really the reason why I got into using Markdown in the first place. And it supports images and all of the basic features. And one thing about Markdown is that some of the features are different depending on which editor you are using. For instance, there is different types of markdown syntax with different extensions, but the most commonly used one is GitHub flavored markdown, which is what GitHub's uh, readme files are made with. So everything you see here is actually a markdown document in the form of a readme.md on GitHub. So the uh, next two uh, markdown editors that we're going to look at can be found right in the Ubuntu Software Center. And they have a bunch of uh, different editors that come up when you type Markdown. But the ones we're going to be looking at specifically are Ghostwriter and MarkText. And Mark Text is available on Mac OS, Windows, and Linux, and it has lots of cool features. And this is actually a flat hub, so it's a flat pack version. So this is Mark Text, and it's a much more polished Markdown editor. Its UI is very modern, and it, and it takes styling cues from iOS with its flat theme and symbolic icons. It's very easy to use, and it's great for someone who is new to Markdown because it has a very visual or mouse-based interface. It has active rendering, meaning it previews the rendered Markdown as you write without having to switch between the edit and preview modes like Twilter. And a really unique feature about it is it has a sort of interactive cheat sheet that opens when you type the at symbol. And it also has a secondary menu for formatting and inserting advanced blocks for code, math, charts, lists, and quotes. So that's this here. So you can duplicate, you can turn it into paragraph, headers, math formula, a HTML block, a code block, a quote block, 
ordered list, bullet list, to-do list, Vega chart, not even sure what that is, flow chart, sequence diagrams, and a mermaid block, which I um, honestly don't know what that is either. So obviously it has its own uh, subset of extensions, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and then it has a delete. And when we type the at symbol, we get this list here, which is broken down into several different sections. And then it has all of your headers, your advanced blocks. And another feature it has is if you select some text, you can bold, italicize, underline, strike through, you can quote sure what that is you can turn it into a hyperlink uh, that inserts an image and this clears away anything you may have selected it also supports loading an image or embedding an image from the internet you can have alternate text and you can title the image and it has folder directory management you can copy as markdown, copy as HTML, or paste as plain text. And it also has a tab bar at the top so that you can have more than one markdown project open at the same time, which is useful. It has search functionality and you have the uh, standard table of contents. It lets you skip through different parts of the document quicker. It's useful for larger documents. Uh, one drawback to this editor that I should mention is that it is not a native technologies-based editor. It runs on Electron, which is Chrome's framework. So it's a sort of web app. And it comes with several themes built in. And of course you can export to HTML or PDF. It also allows you to import if you have Pandoc installed, which I'm not sure why it's complaining about that as I believe I do have Pandoc installed. And this is the preferences dialog. So you can turn on auto saving, set the time in milliseconds after a change that the file gets saved. You can have custom or native title bar styles. You can enable AIDOU, which is like an emoji thing. It's kind of strange. You can make it open the last window state. You can have it open a default directory or open a blank page. You can, of course, change your font. Adjust the font size, change the line height of editor lines, automatically close brackets when editing, autocomplete markdown syntax, automatic completion of quotes. And you can choose between Deja Vu, Sans Mono, Source Code Pro, Droid Sans Mono, or Mono Space for the block font in the editor. You can hide hint for quickly creating paragraphs, which is what the at symbol is. Change how your bullet lists appear with a plus, a minus, or an asterisk. And this changes how your ordered lists are set. And this, of course, is the themes. These are where your images will be stored locally. And they also have an image uploader service integration with sm.ms which you can also use your github account and that is mark text so another markdown editor that you can find in the ubuntu software store is called ghostwriter 
and it is a distraction-free markdown editor for Windows and Linux. It is not an Electron app like MarkText. It is written in C++ natively, and it works with a sort of two-pane edit and preview. So you edit on the left pane in Markdown, and the rendered preview appears to the right. The session statistics and outline uh, cheat sheet and document statistics all appear as these separate windows that pop up. And as you can see here, you can export to a ton of different formats. And these are all of the different markdown flavors it supports. And you can switch between GitHub Dark or GitHub Default. It does have spell checking, which I don't believe Martex has spell checking. And of course it has a multitude of themes. You can also add your own background image, which I have my uh, DS Tech logo. Uh, you can edit custom style sheets, you can change your fonts. It of course has auto saving. It creates backups. Show current time in full screen mode, hide menu bar in full screen mode, and there's rounded or square interface style, not sure what that means. And it can remember file history. You can also change your editor, tabulation, styling and typing, spell check settings, and H of display. That would be these panels over here, the cheat sheet, etc. You can change their opacities and whatnot. This is a pretty good editor. I actually was using this for a long while before I moved to what I'm using now. So the next markdown editor is the one that I am currently using and that is Typora. It is not native to Linux. It is in fact an Electron app, but I really do prefer it. it pretty much has every possible feature that we've already gone over in all the other editors but it's available in just a very simple and clean package for mac os x windows and linux and here is a document that i did and as you can see we've got five built-in themes. I believe you can also create your own and import other ones. It has a multi-view file browser, so you can view it as articles or as file trees. It also has an integrated search, and of course it has an outline to quickly move through larger documents such as this one. And all of the text formatting can be done with a simple right click from headings we can insert images footnotes URL link references horizontal lines tables code fences map math blocks table of contents which is a kind of unique feature so that's pretty much an outline of the entire document YAML front matter for doing the headers of web pages and whatnot. It also has quick formatting of text, bold and italic, you can denote, create a link, quickly insert our blocks, numbered lists, unordered lists, even to-do lists. And you can even mark them as done. You can of course view as source code, focus mode, typewriter mode, it also has complete spell checking, which is a lifesaver for people like me. And we can make it strong, emphasize, underline, make code, strike, comment, hyperlink, image, etc. and so forth. All your paragraph functions are here. Smart punctuation, math tools, copy and paste this plain text, is markdown, is HTML, copy without the theme styling, line ending white space and line breaks, find and replace. It can import from MS Word, text latex, restructured text, org mode, wiki, epub, textile, opml, etc. and can export 
as PDF HTML, HTML without styles, Word, OpenOffice, RTF, EPUB, LaTeX, MediaWiki, Restructure Text, Textile, OPML, even an image if it's a short enough document, and has all of the preferences and customization that you'll find in the other editors aside from maybe having your own background and whatnot, but you could probably add that as well. This is not a native app, it is an Electron app, meaning you have all your Chrome inspection tools available if you should desire them. And here is that same document as a exported web page. This is HTML with inline uh, CSS markup. And here is the document as a PDF, a functioning PDF with the outline. So that is a pretty it's probably my favorite of the Markdown editors. I would highly recommend it. So uh, since Markdown is portable, you may be saying to yourself, well, what if I want to leave my computer and pick up working on a document or a project on my phone? Have no fear. IA Writer is perfect for you. It's available for Windows, Mac, Android, and iPhone and iPad. I, of course, use it for Android since it does not actually have a Linux version. But it is also a wonderful Markdown app, and you can get it in the iTunes Store or in the Google Play Store. And basically, we're here on Android. Going to have a quick look at the IA Writer. Basically, I just sync everything up with my Nextcloud, or you could use your Dropbox or Google Drive. And basically you just do all of your styling with the, the little toolbar. This is for quickly navigating. Not quite as easy as it is on the desktop. But you can have unordered and ordered lists. It's got undo and redo. And it also supports images. It can be a little tricky, but it does support them. You can have word count. And it, of course, has its own settings. It even has an online collaboration function. You can export to plain text, HTML, and, of course, PDF or Microsoft Word. And I've actually done a lot of work on my phone using this very thumb keyboard. So it's really not that bad. Oh, this is probably the best uh, Markdown writer that I've found for Android. I'm sure there might be other better ones for iOS. But overall, it's not bad in my opinion. So there you have it. There are four wonderful Markdown editors for Linux, plus one for Android and iOS. I hope uh, you learned something and perhaps you can put Markdown to use in your life. I know that I probably couldn't live without it now that I have it. Like I said, you can also use it to uh, create stuff for your blog posts and use it, I believe, on websites like Quora. You can use it to style your Reddit posts. It's a lot easier to use than actually learning to uh, style HTML with CSS. And it's, it's more of the layman's way of creating stylized content in a portable fashion. Like I said, you can do it on your phone. You can do it just about anywhere. Uh, thank you for watching. Please, if you liked it, leave a like. If you think you might want more tech-related, focusing on open source and Linux content, please subscribe. I put up new videos constantly. I have lots of cool stuff on the way. We'll see you in the next one.